three, two, one. Boom. And we're back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. Yet another Socratic dialogue taking over the weekly roundup, oh, just in case yeah. you uh, jump in on this episode. Or no, you've been in listening to last episodes, old episodes, yeah. and then you're like, oh, how come they don't do weekly roundups anymore? That's um, pretty much because Vish figured out an efficient way. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many times I'm going to repeat this exact same phrase. Uh, Maybe uh, like probably a few more times. Yeah, you know, uh, until it gets like assumed. (laughs) Like 20 episodes in, I'll just stop using this same intro. Anyways, instead of doing the four things we thought were cool from the week, we switched it to Socratic dialogue. We still have like movie reviews and all that to differentiate those ones. Mm. But like when we talk about like ideas and stuff, this is pretty much where they live now. So if you want to listen to ideas, listen to Socratic dialogue. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So um, this one is, does money buy happiness? Does money buy happiness? So one of I the guess oldest questions. one of the oldest questions of all time. So I guess like where we should start is where did money come from? Okay. Like the, the origin of money. Right. So actually even before the origin of money, <laughs> well, let's go, let's go before the origin of money. Right. So when we were hunter gatherers, yeah. we, we would like, trade things yeah you know what i'm saying like it'd be like this loaf of bread for your fish yes you know something like that yeah um or like my time for your you know flowers huh well, okay like i don't know it's a simple trade right there was like trade yes, trade yes. trade before there was like money but i guess like money is still but trade. that is still but yeah. it's more like bartering it was a barter system that's what it was uh yeah right but now we have a uh a system in place and that was that was to replace the cow i believe i think it was in that book what it's like sapiens okay i think it was in sapiens okay or like the history of economics i can't remember there's one of those books but it was like um we would we would have cows right you'd bring cows with you uh-huh. and then instead of bringing the cow because if you're gonna go like from the market from your farm to the market it's so far right so yeah. what they invented was like gold Right. Right. So from inventing gold, so it'd be like, okay, I'll give you, you give me this cow, I'll give you this piece of gold. It's a mm-hmm. relative amount to the cow. Okay. Right. So it would be like, or actually even before that, it was like shells and pebbles, mm-hmm. like rare things. And then they mm-hmm. invented gold okay. just to be technical and like meticulous about our explanation. Right. Uh, from there, created banking systems. And the way banking systems worked was you, you could only lend out money that you had on reserve. Mm-hmm via gold in your vault so like every bank actually had a like a stockpile of gold like physical gold right just in case like they had to pay something off they can give away the gold yeah right and then we moved to like a more electronic based economy which is what we have today where it's like stock markets and there's no real gold and it's all about like shifting numbers around and balancing equations yeah it's pretty much and that's how we got the 2018 2018 no 2008 crisis where um everyone was buying houses they were giving these like loans to people that couldn't pay them back i think called subprime loans something like that something like that and um what it was is like people would buy houses on these loans but then they wouldn't have the money to pay back the loans they default you know it's not their first crash right yeah it was like the uh um, in the 70s i think yeah which, um, or something. and then even before that it was the um well the black the recession. The oh, recession. Not, yeah. I was thinking Black Plague. You know. <laughs> That's uh, weird. It was, uh, no, no, not the recession. It was, not the recession, no. What was it? Mm-hmm. It's terrible. We don't even know. Yeah, back in like 40s, right? Yeah, oh, and then sometime. World War II started. Yeah, what was that called? Yeah. Great Depression. The Great Depression. There you go. Um, so go. the Great Depression happened, and then it plummeted, and the only way that people were able to so World War One happened. We hit mm. the Great Depression. World War Two actually kickstarted depression, uh, kickstarted us out of getting out of the Great Depression. Yes. And the reason for that is because money starts circulating. Yeah. And then from there, America realized, oh, war is a great vehicle for funding our mm-hmm. our um, economies. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot of people say today, like it's a war economy. That's why they haven't been out of a war since um, I think the Great De- since World War Two. They haven't been out of war. World War II happened, and then they were like, or no, was it the Vietnam War? Something like that. Since, yeah. since the Vietnam War, they haven't been at war. Mm. Right? Um, anyways, yeah. So that's basically how what happened there. 
in terms of money. We're not going to go into like the actual economics of it and like the conspiracies, etc. Right. The esoteric understandings, because it's like it's not really what this is about. Yeah, we're not talking about that. Yeah. What this is about is does money buy happiness? So, mm. what what are your thoughts, Vish? So, uh, well, in today's economy, I think it does bring happiness in the sense of choices. Right. Totally. I agree. Right. So like money itself, the physical, like if I gave you like a hundred dollars, you're not like actually happy about having the physical hundred dollars. You're happy about the opportunity to use the hundred dollars. Right. Right. Because like if it's just paper or if it's just numbers, Mm -hmm. the happiness fades right it's like it's yeah. it's more like the higher the number the more i can get things that i want right right it it's like a vehicle or a conduit mm-hmm. you know to like allowing you to do things in life yes yeah because without money how could you do things exactly right case closed money buys happiness podcast done <laughs> just kidding all right so anyways um in the general sense it's yes. it's more about like where do you derive happiness from? Mm -hmm. And then money can ultimately help get you there. I think the the disillusionment is like when you win the lottery and then you get all this money and then it's like, I'm still the same person that I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're still dealing with the same struggles. You're still like, like nothing has been solved. And -hmm. then Biggie even said like more money, more problems, right? And then, (laughs) yeah, yeah. but, but like ultimately he was correct because it's like when you have more money it's like you have to think about other people asking you for money or you oh, yeah. think of like solutions to like like oh this aunt is poor so I'm going to give them some money and then you know what I mean like mm-hmm. it really does add more problems in those terms right you know right so maybe it doesn't even buy happiness because it creates problems. Well, but it gives you opportunities. Yes. So then it's like so what is So money? I think it depends on your situation, right? Right. So uh, elaborate, yeah. And then maybe it depends on how much money you have uh what is if it's causing happiness or not, right? So maybe if you have way too much, then you're going to have people asking. So you think there's a point of diminishing returns? Yeah. Well, there is that happiness index where it's mm-hmm. like if you make 75 grand everything pretty much becomes free like all your bills are paid for right you're good yeah. you know not you don't have to worry about anything like to live in like a, a you know you're not gonna buy a freaking boat but like yeah, yeah yeah you have enough to just live for the rest of your life you make 75 grand right right but well two things about that mm-hmm. the first thing is my argument is how much money do you really need because is 75 grand actually and then i see that would be, you know what i'm saying yeah but that would depend upon where you're living Right, this is an average, mm. right? Okay, true. I see what you're saying. Um, some areas are more expensive to live, so you need more money. Some areas are not. So like middle America. So it's like, what do you really want? So it's like, what do you want? That's a real question. Yeah. So it goes back to the person. It's not really about like, does money afford things? It's sort of like drugs. It's like, there's no good or bad. The drug is just the drug. It's the person who uses the drug mm-hmm. that creates either a good or bad decision. Right. But even in saying that, like, what is good and bad? If you look at Nietzsche, like, there is no good or bad. It's just a concept of mind, mm-hmm. right? Again, we won't get into that one. That'll probably be a later Socratic dialogue. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. This this money thing is very confusing. And it's like what I find weird is how people choose to spend money in pursuit of trying to fill a hole. So I think so. That that's a different yes. So if you're doing it as a crux to something, yeah, crutch. Crutch is that yeah. what I said? Is yeah, that, crux I, I did is, not I think, say that. <laughs> crux is like something in between. Whatever. Two things, okay, you know whatever. what I meant. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> then it could be a problem, right? In the long run, I guess. Yeah, totally. That, that's why I'm I'm alluding to the fact that it's like it's not really about money buying happiness. It's about you seeking happiness because you could be poor. Like, um, mm-hmm. so like, if you if you check out my stories and stuff, and you've seen uh, me going to Peru to help these people, like by filming this thing, right? Yeah. And it's like, wow, well, you must have lots of money to do that. It's like, no, mm-hmm. I was like really broke. Right. So it's like, did money buy happiness at that point? Yeah, it allowed me to buy the plane ticket to go and have the equipment to right. go yeah. do it. But it's like, but like, it it was like another person could be like, oh, but 
I'm broke. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you're not. So maybe also I would think because you could be you be super poor and still be happy. Yeah. Uh, what about maybe that's also about um, like what's sur like around like in your surroundings also. Like if you just have people who have money and then you don't, you would feel bad. Mm, it's true too. Yeah. Right. And then if you're around people with the same thing, but you're, you know, you're so, doing with so the it's same. about your experience. Yeah. Can it that also? Yeah. Have enough, uh, why not? True. No. No. Totally. Totally. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm just wondering, like, what place does money have in the pursuit of happiness? Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. Totally, yeah, your your outside experience matters. And I'm thinking, like, okay, if I had money, I'd be able to get out of that experience, mm -hmm. you know? But, like, there are people who live in, like, the favelas in um, Brazil. Brazil, right? And, like, they're super happy because they're, like, they just need, uh, or like, all right, I'm not Brazilian, so I'll use like a Filipino term. So there are people that live in the huts and in th the Philippines, and they're like, all I need is rice and alcohol, and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yeah, but you you needed money to get the rice and alcohol. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, mm -hmm. what what level of money is necessary for happiness? So I guess, all right, so we've we've accepted the fact that money does buy happiness because money allows you to get things that yeah. you need. Yeah that can fulfill you. Right. You know, but like, but is it fulfill you? I guess it would be fulfill you. Cause ultimately I was going to say like, you can, you can only fulfill yourself. Yeah. But like money does take some role in that. Mm -hmm. It maybe it's ultimately, maybe this is how it is. Money is like air. It's all around you and you need it to live. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. it's like, but it's like, does air give me happiness? Is, like, you know, it's like, does money buy happiness? Well, does air is air giving you the provide, Exactly, to, to live. To live so that you can. Uh, be happy. Yeah, so it's so. like, it's like maybe we're just de deconstructing or like we're, we're separating that notion mm -hmm. too heavily. Yeah. You know, we're, we're thinking of it in separate terms, but you have to think of it all as one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe like nothing can buy, nothing can provide you happiness because it's an experience. Mm-hmm. Experience? Yeah. Happiness is an experience. Right. Right. So it's like you, nothing can provide you happiness except for the happiness itself or the choice to be happy. Okay. I see what you're saying. So a mindset. Right. It's, I in, think in so. In the sense of it's, it's a mindset. Yeah. So it's like, it's like we keep trying to like say certain things. Like if I get this promotion, I'll be happy. If mm. I graduate this course, I'll be happy. If right. I, um, if I, you know, travel the world, I'll be happy. Right. Maybe it's like, but those are like big things, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And those big things come few and far between. It's about living for the little things. Okay. So it's like, if if it required you to achieve some goal to be happy, then you'll never be happy. Or you'll be happy, but very transiently. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like a lot of people that say like, oh, all I want to do is be the UFC world champion. Then they become the UFC world champion. And then it's like, how do you feel? You're like, I feel, some people say, I feel empty or I feel the same. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's like, why? You've been working so hard towards this goal, but in pursuit of that goal, you didn't realize one thing. It's like, it's not the goal. It's, it's not the destination. It's the journey mm -hmm. that provides you with the happiness. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I see. Cause it's very momentary. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you are now the world champion. And it's like, okay, now. Like the little things. Up. What about like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It, it's to live for the little things. Mm -hmm. Church, you know, those types of moments because they're everywhere. Right. You know, there's there's way more little things than there are big things mm -hmm. in this world. Right. Because once you hit the big thing, it's like, okay, and now... So like you've just become the world champion. Okay, now get off stage. Okay, now go um, to the hospital. Okay, now you're waking up the next day and you have to eat breakfast. Okay, it's a week from now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that momentary piece, that momentary blip of time of like, you are now the world champion. It's already over. 
So you trying to attach to that singular moment, yeah. it's not going to last. Gotcha. But a lot of people think that once I've achieved this thing, it will stay there forever. Mm. But thoughts and feelings are, are transitory. Like they come and they go. Transient. Right, yeah. You know? Hmm. So it's like happiness is not even correlated to money at all. Okay. It's, just, wait, it's, it's correlated, yeah, yeah. but it's not a direct correlation. No, 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 no. Yeah? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, it's, it doesn't have to be connected. Yeah, it doesn't have to be connected. Yeah, it can, it's a separate thing. It's itself. It doesn't matter where you are in your situation as long as you're – it's about like a mindset sort of thing. And, yeah, totally, totally. And, and, not a, and it's, like, it's like happiness and money are correlated – either positively or negatively. Yeah. You can either be positive, like they both go up at the same time or negatively correlated. When one goes down, one goes up. Yeah. Right? But the whole world is correlated because mm-hmm. it's all connected. Yeah. You know? So it's like, okay, you have a million dollars. The whole idea of happiness is just overrated. <laughs> well, that's what, that's actually what the Buddha said. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's what the Buddha said. It's not about the pursuit of happiness because with happiness comes sadness. You can't know that you're happy without the touch of sadness. Right. So like in being happy, you're sad because you know it will end. Yeah. So what the Buddha seeks out is equanimity where it's neither happy nor sad. It's just what's happening Mm -hmm. in this moment. That's true joy. That's what joy is. You know what I'm saying? Right. Actually, that's a great, that's a great thought because it's like we're all like the American dream is like, pursuing happiness Mm -hmm. but it's not about pursuing happiness because you could lose it and that every happy thought is like has a trail of a sad thought Mm -hmm. it's how do you deal with it or how to deal with those like you should be able to deal with those kinds of problems and not just not like if you're just pursuing that then something breaks down in between and like then you'll be sad yeah totally totally but like but at the same time it's like why are we pursuing something because we don't even know Mm that we are actually pursuing the thing we don't want. Right. Right, because, like, in order to pursue happiness, you have to also pursue sadness. Because you're, like, because you have to compare it to something. You're pursuing the sadness of, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the negative. And then you're in pursuit of the happiness. Like, in order to pursue something that will make you happy, you have to think about the thing that will make you sad. Right. Right? Because, like, how would I know if I'm going left if there's no right? Right. Right. To know know? exactly in the direction that you want to go. Exactly. Yeah. But what the Buddha's point was, was equanimity. Mm -hmm. So it's like, don't even think about happiness or sadness because both, although happiness is good, happiness comes with sadness. Right. But if you just focus on equanimity, then there is no happiness and sadness. It's just happening. Mm. You know? Yeah. And that's what, again, that's what joy is. Because joy is neither happy nor sad. It's just equanimity. Right. You know? Hmm, interesting. Right? Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. I think we've had an interesting... What, wait, wait, wait. wait. What, about, what about utilization of money? So, like, we were talking about this before. Like, it's, f- like, with the filling of the void, like, a lot of people will, will spend money on things that are frivolous Okay. Yeah. You know, like, like when you go to the when you go to the club and you're like, okay, I'm gonna drop like 500 bucks, right? On like these shots, but it's like, Battle like we were saying service. before, yeah. There's no, there's no return on your investment. It's like, okay, uh, the that, ROI, yeah. It's like a sunk cost at that point. You're just giving the money away for nothing. But like, you could alternately use that 500 bucks to like buy yourself something to make you better. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of the ways that I used to think as mm-hmm. younger, like the uh, I don't know, I don't know, uh, like to like multiple uses of it. Like uh, how do I say? Like the the return on investment, like should be if if you if you can if you're using it at one time and then it's gonna go away, right, yeah, then it's useless. Then to uh, yeah, to me, yeah, or it should be cheap. It shouldn't be expensive. If, Unless it's an it, experience, though, because, like, you can use that one time and it's gone. But you'll gain knowledge out of that. Like you, you, oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, you're, what you're also gaining from that, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean, like, reusing the device or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, it's yeah. also, like, what other things you've gained or learned from it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what's its, like, relational value yeah. to, like, 
like you must benefit way mm-hmm. more than you will have lost. Yeah. You know, and like, yeah, I think that's where we both agree. And that's why, like, although, because if you watch our setup tour, it's like, yeah, we spent a lot of money on our setup. Right? Mm-hmm. I, it's not really a lot, but I mean, like, we did spend some money on our setup, right? And right, it's yeah. Like, it's not, it doesn't mean that we don't spend money. It's what we spend it on and how we use what we're spending it on. Yeah, totally. Right. And it's like, I could have easily have bought, you know, something of, like, uh, superficial value. Yeah. Right. I guess it's more like why you're buying these things, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Right. So, like, all right, good, good example. So my belt, right? Some, like, my belt was, like, it was on sale, though. It was, like, 100 bucks, But the actual retail value is 200 bucks. Right. Right? So it's, like, but why would you spend 200 bucks? But that's, like, there's a difference between frugality and spending wisely. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like, okay, you can be frugal, and it's like, okay, I'll just buy like a ten dollar belt. But then it's like, so then your whole life experience is just going to be buying ten dollar belts. You know what I'm saying? But like right. for me, the belt looked really cool. It felt really good, and I can use it for a really long time. Mm-hmm. So it's like, the wiser decision would be to get the more stylistic belt than to than to buy a cheap one that I'll have to replace later. And you use belts every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas, like, I would never, I would personally never buy, like, a $500 t-shirt. Because it's like, I'm just using that one day, and then people will know I'm reusing that shirt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, like, a belt is, like, a staple. I think, like, things that are staples, again, it goes back to the ROI. It's like, can you keep reusing this? (laughs) You know? Like, and even if you can't, because, like, how you, you purchase video games, but then you return them. Like you like resell, resell them yeah. and then you just use that extra money for yeah. like another game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unless you're bought digitally. And then you can't yeah, return it. Yeah. But the thing with digital is no tax. <laughs> so there's like some trade offs, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. <laughs> but like Yeah. Riza Riza in his in his book and his interviews, he's like every time he bought every time he made a paycheck from mm-hmm. like a CD or something, he would always like buy something to make his craft better. You know, like, it would be, like, a, either a beatbox machine or, like, a better speakers right. or a new laptop, you know? Mm. He'd very rarely buy a chain. Like, where, whereas, like, they'd get their paycheck and then everyone would go out and buy, like, chains and cars. He's like, how does that make me better? <laughs> how, how will that make me more money in the long run? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that, that's exactly right. It, it, when you buy those sort of things, it's only uh, for short-term yeah. style or And it's, like, superficial. Class, but it's also exactly that, yeah. But it's, like... But then it's like, is it superficial? Because like I'm talking about the belt here that was like 200 bucks. Oh well, 100. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. is that superficial? But it's like, I think it's again a balance of like, you need to know when it's superficial, when it's not. And no, I think. And it's also, more I think it should. Why you're buying it? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like also, why you're buying it? Are you doing it for, like, outside gain, or you just is, is that yeah. is that for your own and like that you wanted to do for yourself. T- totally, totally. Yeah, actually, that, that's a that that's actually, you hit the nail right on the head. Like, that is what it is. It's about, like, why you're buying something. It's not about the actual purchase of buying it. Because, like, maybe maybe you you derive happiness out of everyone else's joy, so, or, like, everyone else having a great time. Mm-hmm. So what you do is you do spend 500 bucks on bottle service. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. for you, it's about everyone being happy yeah you know so in that case it's like okay so then it was worth the 500 bucks mm-hmm. you know but it, it is all about the why the why you're doing something yeah exactly you know and like like it, it's sort of like the tattoos too right it's like why would you spend so much money on tattoos but it's like because there's no ROI in the tattoo but it's like they but the ROI I guess would be like me looking at them and being like, oh yeah, because like I see them as reminders versus like it's not. I'm not just getting something like that's a piece of art, or else I would have just bought a piece of art on the wall. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Because like you said, it's like, like what, like why are you doing it? It wasn't from a place of like affluence, like check me out. But yeah. it's from a place of like, no, these things mean things, and they're good reminders. Yeah. You know. Right. I guess maybe that's what it is. It's like, all right, so we've established money 
Oh, well, that's funny. We actually went back. We went back, and it's like, does money buy happiness? Yes, and no. Right. Right. Because yeah. money affords you the opportunity to do things that will make you happy. But if you yourself are unhappy at your core, then it can't fix it. Then it won't. Yeah. So is it? Does money buy happiness? Depends on what's yes at, or no. What's at the heart of the? Yeah. Right. Ah, so it's, where it's do yes we know? Yeah, yeah because <laughs> that's what it is. Right? It's like it depends. it depends. Like it will buy happiness if you yourself are happy, mm-hmm. or it will uh, like, or if this will like afford you happiness, right? Through your correct why, but if if you are suffering on the inside and you're purchasing it for a bad reason, mm-hmm. your why is incorrect, then it won't buy happiness. Exactly. Maybe it's money affords happiness. Mm. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's like, does money buy happiness? No, but it affords happiness. Yes. I can agree with that. I can agree right. with that. Yeah, I, I think, think that's where we'll settle on that one. Because, like, because that isn't a debate. Like, we went into this, like, not really know. We had an idea. We're like, no, it doesn't buy happiness. Or, no, sorry, sorry. No. We went in with it does buy happiness. Yeah. But now thinking about it, it's like. Or it's the wording that we used to, yeah. to fix that would be, yeah. It, it affords. affords happiness. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Interesting. You know what's funny about these um, Socratic dialogues? Just thinking about it now, because like, I read the Plato's Republic. And it's like, that is. Hmm. Is that where Socratic dialogue came from? I think so. Yeah, so Plato's Republic. So, like, it was just a podcast. During yeah, time. You know, that's what like, that was for them. Yeah, yeah like so if you actually read Plato's Republic, and that's why I, I hated it. Because <laughs> it's it's like, just a dialogue. It's just uh, them talking. But you don't, you don't think that. Like everyone who's like, you know, they're well, adding too much to it. I think it's, in their minds. In their minds. Like yeah. a lot of people. Like there's this guy. Um, I can't. Oh yeah, Journey Jiu Jitsu. I said yeah. this before, but he is like a classic. Is a book that everyone talks about, but nobody's read. Right. So everyone uh, always talks about like, oh. <laughs> You know, have you read Plato's Republic? You know, you're into philosophy, and it's like I did, and it was such a waste of time. <laughs> well, no, no, it was it wasn't a waste of time because I gathered. That right. It's like you're just having a conversation, and everyone who derives philosophy from this is just listening to it and extrapolating your meaning. Right. You know. Yeah. But it's just like anybody who listens to this podcast and they extrapolate meaning. It's like, you no, know, we were just having a conversation. Yeah, and that's all that was, and that's all that they were trying to do at the time. Just question was things. to question, question things, and uh, yeah, that was their main objective in a sense. Yeah, so it's like we place. It's sort of like uh, today when I bought those um, Tibetan momos, because like everyone was like, "Oh, like this is person I work with, like, oh, she sells her momos there." So I was like, "Oh, cool, like let me check out a Tibetan momo." And then I was like, "This is a dumpling, right?" You know, what I mean? it's like it's a Chinese dumpling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's like, is it a Tibetan momo or a Chinese dumpling? Right. You know, but it's like. Where yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, like where. Well, no, we're getting I, lost in cement. I, I, I don't know. Same. I mean, I, I guess so, but uh, I mean, those are just names, right? I mean, but it's it's the perceived notion. So, it's or like, did you add that perceived notion? No, no, no. Okay. Everyone's like th- that's the classification, right? It's like it's yeah, but then if you would ask them, say, yeah, but if if you if you would ask them what is it similar to, would they say Chinese dumplings? Because they're knowledgeable. What I'm saying yeah. is, like, from an okay. outside observer, who so it's it's like the it's like the Plato's Republic. It's yeah. like you're an outside observer. It's like you're an out. That's right. So we don't edit these. <laughs> That's right. You can hear that. Yes. Um, so, so, so. Um, <laughs> okay. So from an outside observer point of view, yeah. Um, you're looking at it like this is something important yeah because we've separated it mm-hmm. right so it's like tibetan momo chinese dumpling yeah but if you actually look into it it's like no they're the same thing so like when you look at plato's republic which is just a dialogue people are like oh no it's a philosophical exploration mm. into the foundation of western society that's what they'll say right right but it's like it was just a dialogue they were just talking they were just talking yeah Right. Yeah. It's like looking at the looking past the apparent separation into the non separation of these are all one thing. Mm-hmm. We're just dividing it up into a myriad of different ways. But in dividing it, it creates confusion. Right, yeah. 
you know, or confusion and hierarchy. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think it was necessarily sometimes intentional. Like uh, these just things generally would happen like that. Yeah, because nobody looks into it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You just look at the perceived value. It's like, it's like if you had never seen the Tibetan Momo or the dumpling before, you'd be like, wow, look at these like Tibetan Momos. And then you go like to Chinese food, like, wow, these Chinese dumplings. It's like, if you actually just look at it, they're really the same thing. Yeah. I mean, just different uh, sauces. Right, right. That's I mean, it. I think people should do that more. I think that was something that I did. But I think we live on a superficial level of like, nobody cares. To no, 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 no. I know. I know that. I know that. You're right. Uh, I'm just saying, like, to cause in order. To, I mean, this is just. Uh, uh, like, I don't think it's gonna happen. It's just something. Uh, I don't. I don't know what the word is. I can't get it. But it's like, well, I guess what would hope to happen in order for like a better world in a sense. But like, I don't think it's gonna happen. Of what? Oh, of, pe- uh, people like, to understanding like in a sense introspecting. More. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. Yeah. So like, because that's something that I did. Remember, like going to. Uh, going to the church and seeing the exact yeah, similar I nothing, that. But yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. all I all I kept saying was like I hear me. people talk about some dif- differences and every time I went I'm like I all I see is the sim all I'm seeing is similarities I don't know what but you know you know what that is <laughs> that's like that's like um, team sports man right. because like my my parents are super Catholic they would never go to a Hindu temple right, right. and then that's the that's like fun. super no 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 but the thing about it through separation of ignorance. No, through separation, you've created ignorance. Okay. So it's like, because I won't look at it, they won't I will never realize yeah, yeah. that they're the same thing. Right. So it's like, when, because you broke broke the barrier of your like, okay, I go to the temple a lot as a kid. Let me check out what mm. like, church is like. Right. But like somebody who's like a staunch believer in Catholicism will never go to a Hindu temple. No, no. Because they'll be like, or they'll go and they'll just be like, oh, this is some archaic BS that's mm-hmm. like not the same as what I believe in. Right, and not willing to look further than that. Right. right. But then if you, I guess it's all about having an open mind. Yeah. You know? Because, or again, I, I love this line, but it's like you have to be willing to stare into the dark abyss <laughs> and don't blink. Because it's like, the reason why I call it the dark abyss is because the truth is, like, scary. Right. But you gotta, like, not play Because, like, in that moment, it's like, if you're a staunch believer in Catholicism, then you go to Hinduism, and you're like, well, this is the same thing. But that's very scary. Because like, what, is, be very, what yeah. does that mean about my belief system mm. for the past, like, 60 years of my life? Right. So rather than facing your demon, mm-hmm. you just ignore it. Yeah. You know? But, I mean, there are levels to everything. Because it's like... Like, if you're afraid of something, you're just going to avoid it. Everyone does it all the time. You know? But it's like, what are you afraid of? Is the question. So, like, the person that, like, gets, like, blood tests every year, you know? Right. In order to, like, check if they have cancer or something. And I never do that. I never go get blood tests. So it's like, (laughs) so it's like, are they thinking I'm ignorant? Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm willing to look into, like, religious beliefs unlike they are so it's like what's your comfortability level because we're all running away from something yes yeah yeah be open minded but you know. but it's not always feasible like yeah, exactly but at the end of the day like the people that we venerate the most like like the Buddhas and the Jesuses mm-hmm. they were all open minded like like if you look at it I mean yeah that's so exactly the, right because right. Uh, I mean he was Jesus was a Jew. Yeah. Then he created Christianity. Yes. He didn't. He wasn't a Christian, and then he, right, freaking was like, oh, let me just continue this on. Yeah. No, he was Jewish, and then he he left it. Yeah. And then just like Buddha was Hindu, and then he left it. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like, the, like the people that we idolize the most are the people we don't even become like, because the people that are willing to stare into the dark abyss the truth are the ones that we call greater than ourselves because we're too afraid to do it. Right. Maybe that's what that is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you think about it, mm-hmm. like, why are people special? You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, so, like, somebody who's, like, a basketball – like, LeBron James, okay? They're like, oh, my God, LeBron James is such a hero. But you don't see him training all the – like, they talk about Kobe Bryant all the time. Mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant will be on the court three hours or whatever past everyone else that already left. And they're like, wow, how do you get the, the stamina to do this? Like, I don't want to be second best. Yeah. But it's like, right. and then we call him special, but it's like, no, if everyone was staying three hours before, then he wouldn't be special. They wouldn't, they would, right. 
you know. Exactly. The people that are special, like uh, in this in this book, uh, I read like the Icarus deception. Mm -hmm. It's like gods are just our best qualities as humans. Uh, yes. So like whatever we look up to is like a god. God includes like Superman, um, Hercules, Mm -hmm. um, Athena, (laughs) like our dog, um, Zeus, all of these, all of these archetypes are just human qualities beyond the norm, Mm -hmm. you know? And then we just call them special because we can't do it. Right, or these are yeah, these are qualities you wish we wish to reach. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's qualities we wish we had. Yeah, and that's why. But they're not easily attainable. And maybe that's why we created them in our minds because we're like, this is, this is something I strive towards. Yeah, you know, it's it's no different than like me looking at Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and being like, I want to be that intelligent, <laughs> because it's like those are the archetypes. Those are like our gods of nowadays. We just call them. Right. Other things. Yeah. You know, we would never call them gods. Like we would never call them gods. But no. like if you like look at the similarity between a god figure and these these like CEOs, mm-hmm. it's like it's the same thing. It's just things that we wouldn't do ourselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or things that we wish we had. We wish. Right. Yeah. But then I guess the argument would be like, but gods can fly. We're breaking the boundary of reality. Right, saying. yeah, but that's, yeah, you keep adding on things to it that make it more To make it special. more, yeah, yeah, like more and more separate from And me, then, exactly, yeah. You know, yeah, just adding so I can make it more special. Exactly. Yeah. That, this is why we can't reach, so we are. Yeah, so we are under them. We, we are, are under lower them. them. Yeah, them. yeah. We, this is our place because they can do things that we can't do. Right. But it's like, we can do things that they can't do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. I think it was it, that was that though between the different religions would be the one upping each other. What do you mean? Uh, like that's just how it would grow. Like, oh, this god is stronger than yours. Like, oh yeah, yeah, like that, that is that is what that's what happened, it is. Though. That's exactly that's what I'm saying. By adding these other features to it, that doesn't that aren't real. That aren't real to make it even more powerful in a sense. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. My God's better than your God. Why? Because my God can fly. Oh, yeah, well, my God can fly and shoot lasers at its eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, mine's indestructible. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Team sports, but that's all it comes down or to. Or, like, you have multiple gods. Well, if you have one that does all of that. Like, so you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, so that's true. true. That's true. Like, that's true. <laughs> or or, or the, the best one is, uh, so, like, you have the Greek gods, right? Yeah. And then, like, oh... Like, we have all these, like, we have 25 gods or whatever, however many there are, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's like Catholicism comes in. We have one god that's omnipotent, <laughs> and he can create and destroy anything at will. Right. They've got, like, the ultimate god. Yeah. You know, whereas other gods have, like, human flaws. So that's why the other... So, like, no, yeah, no, exactly. No, that's what the... Mm, with the Moses... That's what the Jesus... Stu- or, sorry, the, the Jewish Bible, right? That's what they yeah. brought. So then the other two had to be similar... In the sense that's true because they because like they, the Egyptians had like raw that? yeah yeah and like the Egyptian you... gods could die because Anubis got ripped apart right you know what I mean? yeah and it's like was it Anubis oh, whatever one of those gods they got like ripped apart yes. and then like Greek gods can die so then Christianity's like you know what I got it we're gonna make the most indestructible god ever <laughs> right and we win and we win the war exactly you know but that's what the belief system becomes and that's why mm. Catholicism took over like the majority of the world. Or not even, no, it's not Catholicism. It's the Abrahamic God. It's the Abrahamic God. Because from Abraham yes. created Jesus' God, which created Islam's God. Yep. So it's like, it's the same God, though. So that's mm. like the ultimate God. Exactly. You know? That's really what it, wow, this is so like anti-religious right now, but it's like, <laughs> so if you think about it, it's like it's like kids, when they're like creating Mm-hmm. Things you you totally got it. It's like mine's gonna be your god. Yeah, <laughs> that's wow. uh, such a childish. Behavior. And then from there we've like we've created these like acolytes, these like strong believers mm-hmm. who will fight the wars on behalf of that god. It's like no, no, our superhuman god will destroy them. Like yeah, give yeah. us the power. Let's right. go to war. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like because like in the right. in the Bible, remember in the recap, I said like I think it's in, it's in Ezekiel. How like they had already escaped, mm-hmm. and then like they're like, actually, we should turn around and we should destroy Egypt. It was in there. I was like, wait, what? You guys have already <laughs> left. I don't understand. Right. Why are you going back? 
you know? Mm. It's like, no, we, we need to stomp out that monotheistic god for our... No, that polytheistic, polytheistic. religion yeah. for our monotheistic one. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you'd already got what you wanted, now you're just getting greedy. Right. You know? Yeah. Or maybe they had the vendetta because of, like, mm. they're like, you, you did the whole, like, let my people go thing. So it's like, now that they got strong... Right. They're like, let's go take our revenge. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. That's that's the thing about like history and stuff. I love like looking into it because like you don't you never know. Hmm. It's really just like domino effects into time. Like we had that conversation about fractals, right? We're just fractals, and it's like you never know what was the impetus for it. So it's like <laughs> the the free, they probably the like the Jewish uh, people they could have like the Semites. Yeah, the Semites. Right. Okay. And then, then they would have like left, and then the leader of the Semites was probably like, you know what? Let's just go back and take them out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, and then that sparked history. Yeah. You know, like yeah. these leaders with their like infinite powers, with too much mm-hmm. of a whim. You know, and it, it's even still happening in today. You know. Yeah. Like, if you watch The Vice, we'll do a recap on Vice. But if you watch the way Vice is, it's like, okay, we're just going to put this person in charge to, like, you know, like, be a bumbling fool. And then we're going to get actually, like, Dick Cheney in there mm-hmm. to, like, do all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, that was just that was just a fractal. It was a moment. And then from that, it was, like, it was birth from his childhood. Remember, like, he yes. always wanted to become somebody. Yep. So it's like this all led up to this one moment of him colluding to mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah you know in like to like take subtle control yeah. and then from there we we're where we are today yeah it's like small small things make a big difference it's like that line of all like, the things that yeah it, when yeah. when a butterfly flaps its wings there's a tornado in <laughs> hawaii or whatever right it's not real but it's like it's basically what it's saying yeah 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 yes yeah it's a good good chat well, we deviated from the money thing but yeah. Into the money handlers. I don't know. Oh, that's true. That is what we did. We went from, yeah, that's true. We went from the history of money, does money buy happiness, to how do people use money. Or the money handlers. Yeah, you're right. It's not really <laughs> the people in charge. That's yeah, well, sometimes do. it goes in directions we don't know. Yeah. All right. So I guess hopefully we'll get that advice one out. But money can't buy happiness. Yeah, because, I got to do notes on them. Yeah. Yeah. But money can't buy happiness because you yourself have to be happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> money, no, no. The, the biggest takeaway from this whole podcast yep. is this. Money can't buy happiness, but money can afford happiness. Right. It's also a pun because you have to afford something. Yeah. Get it? Ha, ha, ha. All right. <laughs> Till next time. Any final thoughts? Uh, yes. What? I got nine, nine problems, but money ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Um... <laughs> Give us your money. Okay. Because it would afford more happiness. Yes. <laughs> All right. Take All it right. easy. See you. Bye. Bye.